Well, first of all, uh, let me say I'm sorry I don't speak German or I don't speak it very well. So I hope most of you can understand English. Um, let me say that this is the perfect museum uh, to give the first major retrospective of my father's work. Uh, he would be so proud to be here, and I'm so proud that it's here. I want to tell you just a little about uh, my father, uh, Fred Stein. He, he died very young, and the reason that his work is not known uh, better than it is, uh, actually his work is known only through my efforts. He was completely forgotten. He died very young in 1967 at the age of 58, and uh, Photography really took off as an art form in the late 70s and uh, in the 80s. And so there were not many museums at all. Now almost every museum has a photography department. In fact, uh, my father even gave a, uh, a talk on uh, a lecture called Is Photography Art? And uh, now, of course, photography is art, and photography sells for a lot of money in art galleries and in auctions and so on. In those days, you could buy, you know, uh, Andre Cortez for $50. If you met him on the street, he'd, he'd be very happy to s sell it to you. And I know people who, who bought some from him, and they're very happy. Um, and Fred Stein, you could probably have gotten for $10. <laughs> um, so, this exhibition is really a way uh, for me to, in a way, to thank my father. And I thank him for my life and my profession. I'm a cinematographer, a director of photography. I've shot many movies uh, in Hollywood and around the world. And uh, my father taught me photographer, photography as a young boy. We used to go around in the streets and uh, take pictures of, of, uh, of New York and people, and uh, then we would go home and compare the pictures. And uh, so he, he taught me photography. We worked in the dark room together. We went to museums. He taught me about composition and how to see the world through a frame. So it was, uh, so my life is photography, although it's not still photography, it's moving images. So this is a way of, of, for me to thank him is to bring his work back before the public. But it's not only, I, I, that is not my only uh, motivation. My, my motivation is to, to have recognition for his work in the history of photography. It's, um, he was one of the first photographers to shoot handheld in the streets of Paris, portraits as well as street scenes. And that was a, it was a relatively new, there were some photographers doing that, but before that there were big, big cameras on tripods and long time exposures, and the Leica camera enabled him to work quickly to even shoot at night, and you can see night scenes out there because the lenses were fast and uh, the film was fast. It was a whole new world of photography in a very important era. And, and he was one of those who first uh, was doing uh, handheld photography. And even more than the history of photography is just history itself. Uh, he photographed... Um, as, as was said before, over 1,200 important people. Um, and and uh, it, it's important for a historical record for his work uh, not to be forgotten. And you'll see a whole gallery of, of portraits of well-known people. And the people he photographed were the people he was interested in. He never worked for, on staff for any uh, magazines or newspapers. Uh, he worked for himself. So he photographed people he was interested in. And who was he interested in? Well, he was interested in, generally speaking, humanitarians like who he was. And he was a humanitarian. He wanted to help the, uh, the common man. I hate to use an expression like that, but that's what he wanted to do. He trained as a lawyer in Germany uh, and wanted to be a public defender. And then uh, when he became a photographer, because that was 
one of the only things open to him when he was in France. He couldn't practice law. He would have had to go to law school again. And in order to practice law in France, you had to live there for 10 years. So that was, that was impossible. He needed to support himself and his wife. And so what was open to him was to work freelance as an artist. Um, okay. Uh, I'll be very brief because I'm only supposed to be speaking for 10 minutes. I'm a professor now of cinematography at New York University, and I can talk forever. So I'm going, <laughs> I'm going, to, I'm going to keep it short because I know you want to see the exhibition. Um, but the way he took his portraits was he was a, he was a true intellectual. He read... Um, he read the New York Times from cover to cover every day. He read Time Magazine every week. He read two or three books a week. Um, and w when he wasn't out photographing, he was reading. So he remembered what he read. He knew the people he was interested in. He was very interested in politics, in art, in literature, in history, in science. In, uh, I mean, he, he was a true intellectual. So when he met these people who you'll see out there, um, he would talk to them, and he didn't just take their pictures. And just, I, I'm, I'm going to close with on a, on a uh, I don't know, I don't want to say a down note, but I tried to do what he did, and I was unsuccessful all the time. Uh, I, I'm a good cinematographer, uh, but a, not a good photographer, because number one, I'm not an intellectual, and I, at one point I decided... I'm meeting all these famous people because I'm a cinematographer, I'm traveling, I'm meeting uh, uh, politicians, of course, I, I met many and worked with many famous actors. Um, and I, so I got a little camera and every time I would go on a job I would shoot pictures of these people, but they weren't good portraits. They were images of the people who were there, but I, I didn't do what my father did. I didn't speak to them. Uh, on their level, and, and I mean, you know, when he, when he spoke to Albert Einstein, he didn't speak on his theoretical level, but they had political uh, discussions, and they enjoyed each other very much. In fact, I should tell you this little story very, very quickly, right? You, you're going to tell me when I have to leave. <laughs> so, I'm sorry. Um, he, he, people ask me, how did he get to all these people? He photographed over 1,200 interesting people. Um, and he just, he found a way. He, he heard somebody was in town. He called their publisher. He asked his friends. Friends would, would say, oh, I know someone who's coming. I know them. You, you should uh, meet them. You should photograph them. So he got to them. Um, and then he talked to them. And then he, he enjoyed talking to them as much as he enjoyed photographing them. And when they were relaxed and when they struck a pose that he thought was relevant to who they were because he knew their work, he would take pictures. So Einstein, uh, he, was, he, he had an appointment to photograph Einstein um, because Einstein's first assistant, Peter Bergman, went to high school with Fred. And Einstein except, hated to have his picture taken and accepted to have uh, his picture taken because he knew it would help Fred. As a refugee, he knew a photograph of him. So this became one of the most famous pictures of Albert Einstein. So he had a 10-minute appointment to film Einstein, and uh, after 10 minutes, his secretary came in and said, okay, the professor has got to get back to work. Uh, you should leave now. And Einstein said, no, 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 he has to stay. He has to stay. And they had such a good time, he stayed for two hours. So, but meanwhile, Fred took 25 pictures of Einstein in two hours. Now, here's a photographer. If you're, if you're with Albert Einstein for two hours, you're going to take 200 pictures, 300 pictures. I mean hoping that you're going to get one or two or three good... Well, if you look outside in the vitrine, there's one of the two uh, contact sheets of all the pictures of Einstein. And almost all of them are really good. And, of course, he had one that was uh, very famous, and that's the one he, he liked, and that's the one that was on the German postage stamp. Anyway, my, my pictures are very ordinary. My pictures uh, on the street... I couldn't go up to people and take, take their picture. It, I, it's, uh, in, in New York, um, you, you just, 
you just don't go up to people and take pictures. <laughs> you, could, you, could, you could get hurt. <laughs> it's, sort of like, um, it's sort of like the American Indians. Um, it's like stealing their soul. Um, but my father was an outsider. He, um, he was German. He came to France, and he, was, you know, he took pictures of poor people and, and indigent people and uh, rich people. And the same thing in New York. He took me around to Harlem and to uh, Little Italy and Chinatown and to the Jewish sections and to Fifth Avenue, to the rich areas and to slums. And we went everywhere, and he was... It, but he had a real humanity, and that's what, it, when you go out, and I'll, I'll close with this, uh, when you go out, look for the humanity in the pictures and the relevancy in today's, today's world. Um, uh, in many of the pictures, you'll see uh, people relating to the photographer, uh, especially in his children's pictures. And there's never, he never projected any kind of hostility or, or uh, aloofness, he wasn't looking down at people. He was, he was looking at them, and, and they would stop, and they just, for some reason, they just, just you, you capture them in their, in their daily life. So let me just say once again, thank you so much, everybody, for all your help and support. And, of course, we're always, I'm still working and trying to get uh, uh, more uh, visibility for my father's work and, and enjoy the exhibition. Thank you.